Hello again, everybody. Once again, this is Dax, out on another great walking adventure. <laughs> I had an interesting little experience today. Not certain exactly what it was, or what it meant, or even really what happened. But I figured that I would share my experience of it with you. So today I had uh, arrived early for work. I was about 45 minutes early. <laughs> Not quite certain how that happened, but it did. I decided to go outside, take in a little walk before it was time for me to actually start working. As I was walking along the sidewalk, uh, one, one thing to be aware of is that right now there's a festival going on downtown. It's a week-long festival, so there's a lot of people there that aren't normally present. And I'm pretty certain that what was going on around me was a part of that. I was removed from the festival by a couple of blocks, but it was still within the zone where people are parking and walking over there and things like that. So anyway, I was walking along, and uh, up ahead of me, heading my direction on the same sidewalk, were a couple of women. My guess is it was a mother-daughter team, but I don't know that for certain. They looked related, and one looked older than the other. Anyway, there were these two women walking on the sidewalk towards me, and this guy approaches them. And I didn't know what the situation was. I didn't know if they were strangers or family or what. But anyway, this guy approached the two women. And I see them talking at a distance. And the women seemed very uncomfortable about the whole situation. Anyway, I just continued walking towards them because, you know, I was going to head that direction regardless. But anyway, I noticed that the guy was talking to them, and he actually grabbed the older woman to force her to stop and listen to him for a while. It, it was one of those things where I wasn't certain. I was increasingly getting the impression that I should somehow get involved, but I still wasn't certain if it was any of my business. So when I got close enough, I just used my most friendly and annoying hi greeting that I could come up with. I figured that if I was friendly but annoying about it, then if there wasn't anything malicious going on, then everyone would probably just think that I was dumb but friendly and smile and be on their way. Whereas if something was happening, I figured that the women would probably seem happy to see someone else walking by, and he would probably be frustrated by my greetings. So I did that and got a bunch of friendly hellos from all of them. The women started walking off, and the guy started following me. And he tried to stop me. And he was giving me some line about how he needed to go get pharmaceuticals and he couldn't afford to pick them up because he's not getting paid till later on in the week or whatever. And the whole thing smelled like bullshit to me, so I told him, no, sorry man, I can't help you with that. He goes, okay, cool. But then his follow-up question was, could I borrow a cigarette? I don't know. Anyway, I don't smoke, and I told him that, and I went on my way. But as I glanced back to see him in the sidewalk, I noticed that the uh, women were nowhere to be found. It's like the instant he had turned his attention to me, they were gone. So I'm not quite certain what that was. I have a sneaking suspicion that he might have been on the way to getting violent with the two women if I hadn't have wandered by. But that's just an impression I have. Who knows if it was actually true. It felt like divine providence was somehow involved. 
you know, because it was very strange that I would wind up at work that early. And it was also very strange that I just decided to go walking around like that until it was time to start work. And it was also strange that I would stumble across something like that. Granted, these could all be called coincidences. But I've stated before, I have a belief about coincidences. You can only have so many coincidences taking place before they stop being coincidences. Well, anyway, I didn't know what to make of that, but I told God that he could use me for that any time he wants. If he ever wants to just position me in a place to help someone out, please do it. And I don't know. Before I started this recording tonight, I prayed that whatever I said on here on this recording tonight would help somebody out in some way. That it would be useful and helpful to somebody listening. I don't really see how any of this could be useful to you or helpful in any way, but, you know, I made that prayer and this is what's spilling out of my mouth. So, I suppose there might be somebody out there somewhere that this is exactly what they need to hear. Although I don't really understand what those circumstances could be. It is important, though, that we all do our part to make the world a better place. Most of the problems in our world seem to come from selfishness. And if we would just take a moment, it's important to think about ourselves, too. It's important to be in a state of balance. But we just need to spend some time giving a shit about others. And not just other people. We need to give a shit about animals, too. We need to give a shit about that white moth that just flew by my arm. <laughs> pretty little moth. It was a light gray moth. Well, once again, I don't know how anything that I've said so far tonight could be helping anyone out, but I suppose there's someone out there that needed to hear this. I do love you all. We, the human race, we need to love each other more. And it's one of those things you can't force other people to love more. All that you can really do is be the example. Do it yourself. You be the one who loves everyone and wants what's best for everyone without asking for anything in return. And every person who does that will make the world just a little bit better of a place. Can't make the world better by forcing everyone else to be the one who changes. We've got to be the change that we want to see. To paraphrase Gandhi, been doing an interesting meditation today. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on it. It's a rather personal meditation, but I am willing to say that I've been looking back at people who were important to me at various stages in my life and just being thankful for their presence being grateful for them having been there. A lot of them are probably people who have no idea they had the effect on my life that they did. That happens a lot, though. You do something that to you is a very small thing, and to someone else it changes everything. And I've known a lot of beautiful people in my life, and I'm not meaning that physically. Although in many cases, the physical thing does apply as well. <laughs> uh, it was an internalization process rather than external, though. You, you can say that I was thanking God for their presence, but it was more of an internal thing, too. That was actually one of the goals of the meditation, is to take the external world and bring it inside of me. So it's kind of like I was taking responsibility for the good people and the good things in my life. And that's about all I'm going to say about that meditation. Like I said, it was very personal, so I don't want to get into it more than that. 
And anything else I have to say about it can fit firmly under the none of your business category. <laughs> and here we've got some oncoming traffic. Very quiet tonight, though. Another moth just flew above me. It's a very quiet night. It's a Saturday night, and there's been a festival in town. I'm going to be there all week. And yet I don't see hardly anybody. Of course, I say that, and now I hear another car coming in the distance. And it turned to the side way ahead of me, so that one won't be driving by. Sometimes I do wonder about what it is that you guys need. Everybody has needs. Orion is very big in the sky tonight. Once again, Orion, I've mentioned this in one of the other videos, it's a winter constellation, which means that where I live, it's only really up in the sky during the winter. During the summer, it's either at or below the horizon, so you can't really see it. And this is the second day of fall when I'm recording this. So this is the first time in a long time that Orion has been up high in the sky, brightly visible where he's easy to see. When I was a child, my parents owned a small town movie theater. But it wasn't in the small town where we lived. We would have to drive there and back every night in order to work the movie theater. And my parents were never the kind of parents who wanted us to be raised by babysitters. So they were going in there to work the family business. They were going to bring us with them. And I remember at night on the drive home from that theater, I would always look out the window and admire Orion. Of course, at the time, I didn't know the name of any of the constellations. Even today, I only know the names of a few. I don't remember if I knew the name of the Orion constellation yet or not. I just remember him being a striking symbol in the sky, something that I would always look at. And I would just stare and imagine what's out there all the way home every night, I'm trying to remember how old I was. I'm thinking I was either in fourth or fifth grade at the time. But yes, I just remember how striking that constellation always was. And I would have a good 30 minutes to an hour every night to just stare at that constellation in wonder. It also helped that we were driving from one town to the next so there was that nice large span of time every single night when there were no street lights to blot out the stars. <laughs> I can still remember, in, a, in an entirely unrelated event, I can still remember my baby brother when he was in high school. It's one of those things where his eyesight had dimmed on him, but it happened slowly enough that he didn't actually realize he was losing his eyesight for a while. So after years of needing glasses, he finally, finally goes to the optometrist and gets a pair. <laughs> and he gets home that night puts on a pair of glasses after having actually needed them for a couple of years. He puts them on and he looks up at the sky and he sees stars for the first time in ages. Give me a second here. How you doing, Bert? I'm doing very well. What's up with you? Hey, were you waving at somebody this long ago? Or... Uh, I was waving at you. Okay, well, somebody called in and said you were waving, waving, trying to like wave them down or something, and I was just kind of curious. No, I'm Maybe just out. A white guy in dark colored clothing, so. Yeah, I'm just out here recording audio tracks for my YouTube channel. Okay. Well, did you so. wave at somebody driving down the road, maybe? And they just maybe 
got scared or something? I don't know. Sometimes I just wave at people. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's probably what it was. That's all right. I have to tell dispatch who I'm out with. Who, who, what's your name? My name's Dax. Dax, what's your last name? All Red. All Red? Okay. Yep. All right. Have a good day. You guys have a good one. Yep. Hey there. So where was I? Oh, yeah. It was uh, my brother had just gotten a pair of glasses for the first time in years. Put them on. He could see stars for the first time since he was a small child. Just amazed him. And another thing he said after getting glasses, he said, I have just realized for the first time that there are a lot of ugly people in this world, including me. I'd better start doing something about that. <laughs> His response to that sort of thing just cracks me up. He's a funny guy. Just saw some meme on the internet today. No idea if it's true, but they happen to mention that, uh, yeah, they happen to mention that usually it's the youngest member of the family that's the funniest. Well, it's certainly true in our case. My baby brother is a funny guy. And something just ran across the street. May have been an armadillo. I'm not certain. I just kind of saw the shape and the size, and that was it. Well, that situation that happened back there a few moments ago with the police pulling over and asking me questions, that, that happens like once every few months or so. And I don't know why. You'd think that they'd have better things to do than question a guy who's walking along a road talking into his phone. <laughs> One time that actually happened to me on my birthday. I've been out here walking this route for about ten years now. I guess people pay so little attention to the world around them that they don't notice a guy walking the same route for ten years. Like I was going to say, one time that happened to me on my birthday. I was walking along on my birthday and a car pulls me over. And I'm glad it was a guy because if it was a girl, I I probably would have assumed that it was some kind of birthday thing somebody was throwing and I would have said something inappropriate because there was no other reason whatsoever for anyone to pull over like that and talk to me. Walking along, minding your own business, cop pulls you over, it's your birthday, it must be a birthday thing. But anyway, it was a guy, so I figured, well... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is for real. I'll just keep my trap shut. I think a lot of it is that people are so fucking afraid of everything. That's one of the things in this world that gets on my nerves and pisses me off, is how afraid everybody is of everything. They always assume the worst of everyone. And it's been a lot worse the last few years. And personally, I blame Fox News for the escalation. I mean, media in general, they, they make more money if we're afraid. But have you ever studied brainwashing and how it works? I recommend it. Do some research. Learn how brainwashing works. And then watch Fox News for like 10 minutes. <laughs> And I can practically guarantee you that within that 10 minute period, they will go through every single bullet point of brainwashing 101. That's what happened with me. I did the research. I wasn't specifically researching brainwashing. I was, uh, I was researching something else. I think I was researching self hypnosis. You know, I, I wanted to learn how to hypnotize myself to change a habit that I didn't like. And it somehow led into researching brainwashing tactics. And then like that day, I stopped by a shop or something and 
Fox News was on the TV. And they went down the list, the exact specific list of all the brainwashing tactics I had just read a few minutes before. It was frightening just how specific and on point what I'd read was with what this channel was doing. Fox News is not news. And I'm not saying that to spread propaganda or to make you hate Fox News or anything like that. It's just what they are. They're not news. They hate and they fear and they get you to hate and fear so that you will join their cult. That's really how I view Fox News. I view them as a cult. They certainly have the, the mentality and the behavior down. And now we're suffering the ramifications of that. People are so afraid of everything. They're afraid of things that cause absolutely no harm whatsoever. They're just terrified. Well, let's hear what to talk about next. You would think, considering the night, that well, there would be a lot of traffic around town. As I already mentioned, it's a Saturday night, and there's a festival going on in town. I also just remembered that it's homecoming night. There should be a lot of teenagers roaming around with their dates. Maybe that's why the cops came over. They were overstaffed for tonight. Nothing was going on. They got bored. It is getting cold. Only the second day of fall and it's already getting cold. I want to live on a tropical island. I'll wind up there someday. I've got business to do here first. Not certain what that business is, but fate keeps drawing me back here, so there's something going on that's important. For all I know, the important thing that I'm doing might be the process of making these videos. Perhaps if I was already living on that tropical island, I might not be doing this sort of thing. There are some very pretty trees in this part of town. Of course, I'm pretty certain what the trees would prefer, that we were nowhere around them. That a way they could be left alone to just grow and live their lives in peace. There was an office building that I used to work at several years ago. And this office building had a landscape crew that maintained the trees and the lawn and the bushes and everything around this this uh, office building. It wasn't a huge office building, but it was 20 floors, so it was a fair-sized office building. It was part of a pair. One building was 20 stories, the other was 21 stories. And there was this company responsible for taking care of the lawns and all the plant life around these buildings. Got to make certain those plants look pretty. I discovered one day that if the wrong person was bothered by anything about the trees in the area, fully mature trees, big, beautiful, put-down roots, if the wrong person didn't like something about the trees, this company would actually go in and uproot the entire tree and drop a new tree in its place. For me, that is a total and complete disregard for the sanctity of life. Trees are living things. And just like us, their lives matter. Now you can make arguments about whose life matters more or less. I can understand the logic in such an argument. But a tree's life is still going to be worth more than being yanked out of the ground because some guy thinks that it looks funny. You don't do that to a living thing. I consider it our jobs as human beings 
to take care of the other life on this planet. And we have completely neglected our duties. We've gotten self-centered and arrogant, and we've started treating every other living thing on the planet like shit, and we think that it's our right to do so. Hello, moth. Got another moth flying around me. Just yesterday, there was a wasp inside where we worked. I've got kind of a strange relationship with insects. I like them, but I don't want to touch them. <laughs> I know, it's ridiculous. But there was this wasp in the building where I worked, and so I took a piece of paper and allowed her to climb onto it, and then I carried her outside and held the piece of paper up to a, a bush out in front of the building, and she crawled onto a leaf, and I wished her a blessing and went back inside to work. She was a pretty wasp. Red, which people don't tend to like red wasps. I just waved at that car as they walked by, so they'll probably call the police on me. I must be up to no good if I'm waving to people. Paranoia of humanity aside, she was a pretty red wasp. People don't generally like red wasps because they're known for having worse tempers than the black wasps. And I don't know if it's true. My personal experience with wasps suggests that it might be. I know at the times I've been stung by a wasp, they were red. But yeah, this was a very pretty red wasp. Seemed friendly enough, though. Of course, when I held the paper out to her, she seemed to know that I was trying to help her. She knew that it was an act of kindness. And so she climbed onto the piece of paper and allowed me to carry her outside, where she could then climb onto the branches of that bush and go on with her life. Of course, the fact that she was crawling around was also strange behavior for a wasp. Every time you see a wasp, they're almost always airborne. So I don't know. It's possible she wasn't feeling too good. But then again, like I've mentioned before, you know, Native American animal totems and all of that, whenever an animal spirit tries to contact you, they usually try to get your attention by behaving in a very strange manner. And a friendly acting red wasp that's crawling around on the table instead of flying through the air is very strange behavior. <laughs> so who knows what that situation was. In Native American... Well, I don't know how Native American this is. This, this is what the shaman that I know has told me and my own experiences seem to validate this, so it may or may not actually be Native American what I'm about to tell you, but I think of it as being Native American knowledge. And that is that the wasp embodies female warrior energy. The feminine warrior. So I'm not quite certain how that plays into things. Not quite certain what it means to have a red feminine warrior show up on my desk and very friendly and patiently wait there for me to help her out the door. Who knows? <laughs> when you describe it that way, it could mean any number of things. But wasp spirit did seem to be trying to get my attention for some reason. And when it's a wasp... Feminine warrior energy is usually somehow involved. Well, I'm almost at the house. And I seem to be out of things to say at the moment. So I'm going to wish you all a very good night. I'm going to close up this video. I wish all of you the best. Everyone out there who's listening. I hope that things are going well for you. 
like I said back at the beginning of this video, I prayed before starting my walk tonight that I would say something that would help anyone who's listening. Hopefully I've done that. I wish you all a good night. I love you all.